What's up guys, welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 16. It's a really special episode. I think you guys are gonna like it a lot. Uh, it starts out with me playing 2-5 at the Mirage and then I get a text to go check out the game at MGM and you guys will see how it goes from there. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. Just cashed out here at the Mirage, played 2-5 uh, with Andrew and some other people. Uh, it was good, game was good. It's 4 a.m. I'm on a weird sleeping schedule, so I'm gonna actually head out over to um, the MGM because I heard that the 2 5 over there is good. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll win some money. I sit down in the 7th seat and buy into the game for a thousand. I notice there are three massive stacks. The 2 seat, who's an older rec player, has 5k in front of him. I quickly realize he's been calling with almost everything pre-flop and post-flop. The 4 seat has around 4k. He's an aggressive younger player. He's been raising pre-flop any time the 2 seat limped in or was in the blinds in order to ISO him. The other large stack was the 9 seat. He's a Vegas reg that's been playing tight for the most part. Now you guys have some background information, let's go ahead and get into the hands. Here I pick up 6-4 spades in the cutoff, the 4 seat opens a 20 from under the gun plus 1, the hijack calls, and now it's on me. I've got a few options that all seem reasonable. Holding is completely fine, and I could 3-bet here which should take down the pot pre-flop a good percentage, but instead I call the 20 and allow the 2 seat to come in from the big blind. The 2 seat does call, and we go 4 ways to the flop. The flop comes out 10-9 deuce with two spades, it checks to me, and I bet 40. I don't expect to win right away with this bet that often, but I like to take control of the pot and don't mind inflating it in position with a big draw. The big blind calls, the initial pre-flop raiser folds, and the hijack also calls. Against two players, I'm a little concerned that someone has a higher flush draw than me, and my hand may be no good even if I do hit it. So. I have to play the following streets cautiously. We go three ways to the turn, and it's the four of diamonds. Both players check to me. I now have some showdown value. If one or both players had a draw, then my hand is best. No need to bet here as a bluff or semi-bluff, especially when I'm up against a known calling station, so I check it back. The river is another four. I make trips, and my hand is very well disguised. Both players check, I bomb it, I bet 175 into 200. If my opponents were both on draws, then they're folding to any bet, no matter what. So I like betting big, and if they have a hand with any value, then this bet should look fishy enough to get a call. The big blind folds, and the hijack calls with 10-7 of spades. He flop top pair with a better flush draw. I get lucky here with a great run out and take down a good sized pot. The next hand I play, I wasn't able to record until it ended, but it's important to go over because it sets up the last hand. We're playing seven handed now. The rec player with the big sack and the two seat has left. I pick up 10 eight of diamonds in the cutoff. The four seat opens under the gun to 25. It folds to me, and this time I three bet to 70. I hadn't three bet him before this point, but had noticed that he folded quite a bit when other players did. It folds to the big blind, he's a new player, and he cold calls 70 with a short stack. Now the under the gun player is getting almost 4 to 1 on a call, and he decides to come along. We go 3 ways to the flop, it becomes 7-5-3 with 2 spades and 1 club. Both players check, no chance I'm going to see bet into 2 players on the board that I didn't connect with at all, especially with a short stack cold calling my 3 bet. I check it back. The turn is the 10 of clubs. So I make top pair and there are two possible flush draws. The big blind checks, the kid in the four seat bets 75, I'm certainly not folding at this point, I call, the big blind also calls. We all see a river and it's the five of hearts. It's a good card, both flush draws miss, no new straight possibilities are out there either. The big blind checks, the player under the gun checks, and now I have a decision to make. Under normal circumstances, I'd check back, but I've seen the 4 seat make really light calls already, 
And given the way the hand played, it looks like I might have 3-bet with ace-king or ace-queen suited, and then called the turn bet with a flush draw. A bet here probably looks like I'm taking a stab at the pot with a missed draw and should look suspicious. I bet 160. I'm a little concerned about the big blind, but I felt like he probably had a missed draw. He ends up folding, and then the four seat goes deep into the tank and ultimately makes the call. I turn over my hand, and it's good. He said that he had a pair with smaller diamonds, so he must have had 9-7 or 7-6 suited. After this, I could tell he was a little bit annoyed that I 3-bet him light pre-flop and then took him to Value Town on the river, but my stack is now up to 1700 and the night is going well. About a half hour later, I pick up pocket jacks in middle position while we're playing six-handed. The player under the gun limps in and I make it 20. The small blind calls and the four seed in the big blind three bets to 90. I got the feeling he was after me since that 10-8 suited hand, so while there's a good chance I'm ahead, there's no reason to four bet here. If I do have the best hand, I'd rather let him bluff into me while I'm in position. If I'm behind, then I don't want to put more money into the pot. I call 90, and the small blind tank calls. We go three ways to the flop. The dealer puts out jack 10 for two hearts. So I'd say that flop is pretty... God. Damn it, what's that, uh, what's that one word? Fuck. Favorable? God damn it, Nimi! What the fuck are you doing in here? God, how did you get, how did you get in? Favorable. Favorable. Uh, the the flop was good. Okay, I was gonna say the flop was good. The flop is good. We've got the nuts in a three bet pot against multiple opponents, and one of them is very aggressive. The small blind checks and the big blind C bets to 165. This is a very draw heavy board and under normal circumstances I'd be inclined to raise, but against this particular opponent I'm still not convinced he has a real hand. I want to give him the opportunity to hang himself. I just flat the small blind then tank flats behind me. The turn is the king of spades. It's not a great card since my hand goes from being the best possible hand to the fourth best possible hand. Either one of my opponents could reasonably have ace queen and the big blind could possibly have pocket kings. The small blind checks, then the big blind checks as well. I'm somewhat concerned about the small blind, but if the big blind hit a gut shot straight draw or a set on the turn, I can't imagine he'd check here. There's no chance I'm ever going to check back, so I bet 425. The small blind folds and the big blind snap calls. I'm not sure what he has at this point. I'm almost certain he doesn't have me beat though since he check called the turn instead of betting or check raising. The river is the five of spades. It's a great card and a complete blank. The player starts looking at my stack though and then asks how much I have left. I've got about a thousand. He announces a bet of 875 and starts sliding his stacks of red into the pot. This is a huge bet relative to the game we're in. And generally, when people bet big and 2-5 on the river, they just always have it. I can't see how I can ever fold though, given the way the hand was played and my image of him. I'm at the very top of my range and this line doesn't make any sense. I make the call, hoping he didn't smash the turn. He says I'm good. I turn over my hand and take down the biggest pot of the block so far. He said later that he had queen five of hearts, so he flopped the flush draw, turned an open-ended straight draw to go with it, then he rivered a pair and turned his hand into a bluff. He was a cool guy and put people in tough spots the whole night, but he got a little bit too aggressive from that point on and his stack went from 4K to 200 by the time I left. Really nice to win that 3K pot. Uh, super glad I came out here. Thanks to my buddy Eric for telling me that the game was good. After that huge pot, I stayed for a few more hours and won an additional couple hundred. By that time, it was 8.30 in the morning and I needed to get some sleep. I racked up, winning over 2,700 on the session, plus I won 150 earlier at the Mirage. It was a great night and I definitely needed it after that trip to Sacramento. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> if you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. And uh, I guess that's it. Good luck at the tables. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do here. I'm just kind of like here. <laughs> that was good.